Is it decor or is it function? That would probably force the industry into solid carbide indexables. Does it also check depth? Oh, it does. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. You got to check out the details in this place. This is crazy. Look at these all the way down. I'm actually down in Chicago and visiting Hymer. Today they're going to be showing us around their facility, some new stuff they have going on, and some new products they're really excited to show us. So let's go inside, meet Steve, and take a look. tell us some of the things we're going to see today. Sure. Well, let me roll up my sleeves and we'll get started. And as a guy who's never used a tool pre presetter or heat shrink machine in my life, am I going to be lost here? No, absolutely not. Uh, one of the things about shrink fit is it's extremely easy to use and very, very consistent. Well, I trust you. Let's go take a peek. All right, sounds good. For those who don't know, who've never used heat shrink tooling before, because some guys maybe in school or guys like me who just don't know better, literally the only way that cutter is being held in that body is because when you heat it up, the body is expanding, letting it move, and when it cools down, it's actually too small for that cutter, so it's holding it tightly. That's correct, and you have 360 degree clamping. Right. Right, and you have nothing pushing it off center. Okay, like a side lock end mill holder, you're pushing the cutter off center, which means you're now only cutting with one flute. Your tool life's gonna be poor, your surface range is gonna be poor. You also have uneven weight, you're gonna have unbalanced. So shrink fit rectifies all those situations. And in a small shop like your own, where you have a lot of setups, whether again, whether it's a apprentice who's been on the job for two hours or a journeyman on the job for 20 years, everybody changes the tools the same way. And in 30 or 40 seconds, it's already cool enough to put back in the machine. This is actually our most popular heat shrink machine. This is the Power Clamp Special Edition. Uh, it has a capability to shrink tools from eighth inch or three millimeter up to inch and a quarter or 32 millimeter. And it does that by using our V2008 coil. And what we have is five stop discs from eighth inch to inch and a quarter. You What's a stop disc do? Uh, a stop disc is a, is, is a ferrite disc that you put in the top of the coil, which channels the energy to, heat, to induce the heat into the tool. Oh, okay. And so you need the right stop disc in order to put the uh, energy wave in the correct position on the tool. Oh, because this doesn't actually heat up itself. It just heats up the actual tool itself. Absolutely correct. Okay, so I like, understand. For, for example, we've got this eight millimeter tool here. So all I did was drop in the right stop disc. I'm gonna bring the coil down until it stops. And you just go until it stops right on top of the coil. And like I told you, Shrink fit's very consistent. So I'm gonna simply hit the heating button. I'm gonna run a predetermined heating cycle. Cutter comes out in about three or four seconds. I've got plenty of time to change my next cutting tool. Now, as soon as I did that, my refrigeration unit turned on. This, this is a refrigerating unit? Correct, there's a refrigeration unit down here. Oh, okay. And we're circulating coolant through these cooling bodies. So it's a non-contact system to evenly take the heat away from the holder and maximize that runout accuracy, which is three micron or one tenth like we talked about. What is this here? That's a clip for these machinable cooling bodies. So all Heimer standard power and heavy duty holders have a four and a half degree angle. Right. But if you did have some type of tool that had an angle that was not four and a half degree, this would obviously not make contact with the holder. The four and a half degree is between here and the actual tip of the, of the tool holder, correct? Absolutely. Correct. Okay. So if you needed to machine one, you could machine this to your unique dimension. And then this will clip in there. Oh, interesting. Now, let's talk about what happens when the dreaded bad thing happens. I broke a tool. How do we get a note of that? Good question. So with our system, we have the shrink out device. So this is our base holder. We normally have chuck supports that would hold the tool holder. Okay. But in this case, we're gonna use a special chuck support, which is the shrink out device. We have a series of rods. And so what we're gonna do, 
It's essentially gonna, like it's a punch, essentially. Exactly. So what we're going to do is here's a tool with a broken cutter in there. Okay. You can see the tool is broken. We're going to suspend the holder on this rod. Okay. Oh, it's just going to sit right up, just like exactly. that. And so now we're going to use gravity as our friend. And that's the stop disc. Correct. I'm learning something today. Now we should be able to use gravity. Oh, how can we do it? And now would I have to do anything special after breaking a tool in there to before I could just put another tool back in there? As long as you do not pull up a burr inside the holder, which in this case I'm certain that we did not, you'll be fine. And now we're gonna cool it down. With a shrink collet, you actually heat up the collet, it expands, you put the cutting tool in. Again, you have much higher gripping torque, much better runout accuracy, but the real key is, in a live tool, you can change out one preset, pre-shrunk cutting tool in a shrink collet. You just switch it out in the live tool, you can do it in one minute. Right, it takes all the, the tool setting out of it. Correct. Traditionally, what you have to do is you open up a collet nut, take the collet, the collet nut out, clean everything, put the new cutting tool in, preset with a caliper, cut the part, scrap the part, measure the part, adjust your adjust, offsets, yeah. and then go back into production. You could be down for 15 minutes. And this turns everything into quick changes then. Correct. So this is the i4.0 Sprint shrink fit machine. So this is, this is Heimer's new line of i4.0 shrink machines where we actually use a scanner technology to actually scan the collet. So that has the barcode right on it. Correct. And it tells the operator exactly where to position the coil. So all I have to do is bring this coil down, mm -hmm. heat that collet just like a holder, Ooh. and change my cutter. So now I'm going to use a vacuum cooling system. And that actually just turned red when you did that there. What's that mean? That's correct. That means that it's hot. That means don't touch. Correct. So now we run a vacuum mist system to cool that tool down in about one minute. So that's actually getting sprayed with coolant while we're talking right now. It's, and it's, it's a mist. It right. vacuumed instantaneously, so nothing stays wet. And I take it when that goes not red, I'm not touching it. That's correct. Easy. And just like that. Oh, you're a braver man than I am. That's because you do this a lot. And just like that, that's where you roll. So it's the Power Clamp i4.0 Sprint and the Heimer's new Shrink Collins. So what are we looking at here? That just moved and you didn't touch it. All right, so this is, actually I did change the setting to oh. make that coil open up. So this is the Power Clamp Premium Plus. This is for large manufacturers who are changing a lot of tools. This is actually designed to have two operators running it simultaneously. Two operators at the same time? That's correct. How many tools must you need to change an hour to have two guys going at the same time? Well, it, it could be a combination of some tools from eighth inch to inch and a quarter, which is what this coil can cover, and some tools from five eighths to two inches. What you're seeing over here is there's a heavy duty CAT or HSK 100A2 holder with a 50 millimeter Heimer extension in it. So wait, this is shrink, shrunk fit into that, and that is shrunk fit into there? Correct, and what we call that is telescopic shrinking. And that's shrunk into there? That's correct. And so only Heimer has that technology. Most of our competitors that offer heat shrink systems say you can only shrink carbide. Honestly, as long as the shank you're shrinking in meets the H6 tolerance, which is the tolerance on the grind of the shank, diameter, right. we can shrink them together. And it's because we control the energy that we put into the holder so precisely that we only heat up the holder and not the similar material that's in there. And this is what you use on this side. Correct. That's, a, data. that's our two inch heavy duty nice. coil. That's the big boy. So over here, this is a fully um, automated coil. Okay. So this we've got a heat setting on here of A3. It's actually marked on the holder. I'm gonna go to A3 and I'm gonna hit enter. Coil is gonna automatically adjust. So the operator doesn't have to guess what diameter like I was doing on the other machines. Just like the other machines though, it's single button operation. Boom, your cutter's out. Yeah. If I want to set height, I could employ my height gauge here. Pull the cutter up against a stop. 
And that's for repeatability if you want. This is for repeatability right. for changing tools. And so now I'm going to come over. And now these cooling bodies, once you break them loose, will come down on their own. We'll cool that tool in about two minutes. And then this cooling body will actually put itself away. And this is the same kind of thing where it's got the liquid coolant coming through here to keep that constantly cool. That's correct. But in this case, the operator doesn't take the cooling body off. It actually puts itself away. It goes and returns itself. Correct. Now, you know what we're going to want you to do next. I want to see this thing get heated up. Okay. What do we do with this? All right. So. We're already on our setting from inch and a half to two inches heavy duty holder down here. So this is going to be going right down to the box. Correct. I'm going to bring this down. And you'll really be shocked how easy this is for Heimer to heat this. So you can see we're running a 16 minute or 16 second cycle, excuse me. But in about eight seconds, that tool will already be ready to come out of here. Holy. So that, that got hot enough to expand big enough to get that, because that's two inch, correct? That's correct. Out of there in about eight seconds. And you can see. And that. There's almost no hot. heat. No, in that not hot at all. I wouldn't okay. grab that. That's Correct. the same. Had this heated up at the same rate as that holder, you would never get this out of here. Because they're both sealed. That's correct. But I have plenty of time to put that back together. Now, I have to admit, this particular assembly will not cool down in one minute. It will take a few minutes longer because we have so much mass that we heated up on this two inch. Well, I mean, what's the outside of that? That's got to be three, four inches? Correct. Yeah. Right. Probably closer to 100 millimeters. So over here, we still have 53 seconds left on this tool. Um, but as soon as that makes it back to room temperature, this diode will turn green and this will park itself. Oh, so this actually shows all the status of my cooling as it happens. That's correct. So large aircraft manufacturers employ this machine. A lot of people in the aerospace division employ this machine. This is the BioLinear tool preset. So let's say an operator wants to set a tool. It's as easy as hitting the release by touch handle and will automatically park the carrier, get it out of the way so that the operator can put the new tool in. And we'll clamp it. You have unlimited tool storage. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up this four flute mill and I'm gonna measure. This is actually in your software there. Correct. And so it's gonna automatically come in. Ooh. And it's going to measure all four cutting edges of this four fluid end mill. So wait, it's actually going to measure each tip. Correct. It's going to check height and oh. diameter. And diameter. Correct. And then we can set tolerances when we set up this tool saying, you know, if this, for example, was a 5 eighths tool, uh, plus zero minus 1,000, for example, on diameter. And when we're done, you're going to see that I can actually pull up a graph and it'll tell me whether or not all my cutting edges are in tolerance. So it's measured all four. Now, is that actually drawing the graph of the edge of that tool? It, it's literally picking up the height and diameter. And so now I'm gonna go here, and you can see all four of my cutting edges are within tolerance for both X and Z. If they were bad, would it be in red? It would be. And let's, oh, say, this is a, let's say that this was a uh, inserted tool with four inserts, and let's say insert two looks strange. I could select it and automatically bring that cutting edge around for the operator, if that was indexable, to address it. Open up that pocket and look at it and see what's going so on. So it knows which one is one, two, three, and four. Correct. Unclamp the tool and go back to the machine. The next tool is good to go. That's right. First of all, 3D taster. Why is it called a 3D taster? I've never quite understood. German that. translation in our catalogs, you're going to see we call it the Heimer 3D sensor. Ah. Um, the whole idea here is it can replace an edge finder. You can do basic uh, probing with it uh, in an analog type of fashion. Um, with a traditional edge finder, it's we call it a wiggler a lot of times. Right. You bring it over next to the part, the bottom portion separates, you zero the machine tool control, you move out of the way, you jog over half the diameter, and you zero the control again. Right. With the 3D sensor, you're literally going to come up to the part. And you're going to bring the red hand to 6 o'clock and the black hand to 12 o'clock. And when you do that, you're on the side of the part. You zero your control, you're good. So you don't need to move anything Correct. once you picked it up. But right. what you can also do with this, because it has an indicator on it, an operator can watch it, you can check flatness, parallelism, perpendicularity. Oh, you could uh, You could zero out on the top of the part and then measure to a bottom of bore all by, you know, zeroing the control and moving it. 
Does it also check depth? Oh, it does. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who's seen that? That is my first time trying to plunge a 3D taster. So um, X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus, and Z. And what kind of range does that have on it? I got maybe so, 200 thou, 300 thou? Correct. It's actually got 200 thousandths of over travel. Okay. After that, this ceramic, um, this ceramic probe tip will actually shatter. So it's about $67 to replace that. And that's tip. to protect all the internals correct. of the 3D taster. And what's this big crazy one here? So this is called the Heimer Centro. So in this case, Whoa. the sensor stays stationary by using basically this arm to hold it in place. And then what we do is we're gonna rotate just the probe tip around a bore in order to find the center of the bore. Oh, so this will actually stay facing the operator while that spins That's in the correct. chuck. That's correct. So that, that holds it stationary, only the probe tip sweeps. So we can find the center of a bore. Let's say you've got a lathe with Y axis, you need to rework a part. Right. You could come in with this and you could find the center of that bore. You know, again, we tell a lot of shops, besides using this as an edge finder and indicator, teach an operator how to probe with this by zeroing the control. Uh, it's a lot more cost effective to use a tool that's about $450 to teach probing. If they crash the probe, it could be as much as $12,000. No thanks. with the power shrink, shrink fit holders. What you're seeing here is the evolution of shrink. Heimer started out with standard shrink holders, which work for many, many applications. But then we came out with power shrink, which has got about 30% more mass by design and it's designed to dampen vibration. And then what you're seeing here is our heavy duty shrink fit holder, which has got twice the mass and it's meant to have maximum gripping torque when you're getting into super alloys. the cutaway this is the actual where the tool goes in this side right correct yeah. and that's where your taper goes i see now and so for using a heavy duty like this that's because you're just hogging a ton of material and you don't want to have the uh the vibration in the actual tool right correct correct when you when you get into these heavy duty holders you're fundamentally trying to have as much tool security as possible without having to employ something that creates run out like a welded right okay or I a now, what's the largest diameter cutter I could put in, say, this heavy duty? We actually have heavy duty shrink holders, and I can show you in the back where we could actually shrink a two inch heat shrink extension or cutting tool into a heavy duty two inch wow. heat shrink holder. Now, I couldn't use a neck tool on something like that, right? Like, I want to go right from the neck of the tool in there. I don't want to have it to neck out and go up. You right? sure? You can, as long as that cutting tool diameter is smaller than my coil that's actually shrinking the tool. In oh, the shrink interesting. telling me about is I've not seen these before I have on the other hand definitely seen collet chucks before what's different about these here because something's different here compared to the ones I know we make standard ER collet chucks that a customer can purchase use their stands use their own collets or use Heimer collets but we also have a high precision collet chuck called a power collet chuck and I'm holding an example of one here this is a cutaway and this is what the complete holder Do you looks mind like if I grab one of these sure here? what's unique about the Heimer power collet chuck is it's reverse compatible. I can use a standard ER or a customer can use their own ERs that collets that they're regular ready to off the shelf. Correct. Right. Or what you can do is you can employ a power collet. A power collet looks like an ER, but then it's extended and we have a pilot on it. And what that pilot does is it centers inside the holder, giving you the same accuracy as shrink fit, which is three microns or one tenth run out accuracy at three times the diameter of the cutter. And that's with so a, you just wrench that on, right? Like this is just with a correct. standard collar wrench on there. That's, That's crazy. I didn't realize that they could get that precise. And I have to ask you, this design here, I see it across a lot of the Heimer products. Yes. Is it decor or is it function? So whenever you've seen that, see the Heimer sine wave on a holder. That means it's a power series, which means it's designed to dampen vibration. Oh, so you don't see it on the standard, but you do see it on the power, you do see it on the heavy duty shrink. And of course you do see it on the power collar. dual lock extensions. These are our dual lock cutting tools. So dual lock is the strongest solid carbide indexable end mill in the world. So that entire thing is actually carbide right down to the threads. Yes, and what you're seeing here is you're seeing 
This is a load bearing thread, and then we have a pilot, and then we actually have two angles here. So it's a, it's a very strong connection between the cutting tool and either the monoblock two holder or the uh, extension, dual lock extension, or in this case, a carbide core dual lock extension. Carbide core dual lock extension. That is a mouthful and what, do, oh wow, that is some real heft to it. So what we're trying to do is dampen vibration with that design is what we're trying to do. Right. And if, if you look at some of our, for example, four flute, uh, Heimer mill, dual lock end mills, we can actually take a one to one and a half times D full slot in Oof. steel, for example, 4140. So I could theoretically chuck this up here and use that as my cutting edge. And because I would have a lot less chatter than, you know, using a solid carbide tool. Yeah, you can actually shrink that into a shrink holder. Now, when I put these in, just out of interest, mm -hmm. these flats here. That's for a torque wrench. So we can torque, torque that wrench. down to the proper torque setting. That way we maximize that rigidity, that ability to make those full slots. And out of interest, if my cost for a solid uh, solid carbide end mill for this would be X, this would be X minus 50%? So the whole idea behind dual lock, okay, is a few years ago, tungsten started to become more restricted by the country that has the most tungsten in the world. Right. And the thought process was if that can, if that tungsten continued to be restricted, then the cost of solid carbide round tools was going to skyrocket. Right. That understand. would probably force the industry into solid carbide indexables because this is a lot less carbide. So right. the idea is to produce something like this to, yes, eventually bring that cost down. Interesting. Now, what is the difference between something like this with a taper on it and something like this that is straight. Is it literally just the profile or are we actually seeing something different in the, uh, this in is the all product? The, this is all based on um, being able to get deep into a cavity and close to a wall. Oh, and I understand. So we're just trying to narrow it up so you can see you've got more depth of cut because where this end mill might be an inch and a half long, maybe you still have another half inch that's at that diameter allowing you to get deep and, and close to a wall. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now if that's a inch and a half length of cut, I could also swap out that with a half inch length of cut or one inch length of cut on the same tool holder. Yeah, yeah. Any, any dual lock cutter that we make in this series, um, you, can, you can swap over. Well, thank you very much for having us by today. Really appreciate it. Again, Heimer's making some crazy stuff out there. One thing we didn't touch on that's behind us is the balancing. So if you guys want to see some more stuff on the balancing equipment, do let us know in the comments below. Again, thank you very much for having us out today. It was great to see all this stuff that I've never seen before. I really appreciate it, Ian. Thank you guys for coming in here. We appreciate it very much. Practical Machinist, we look forward to doing more with you. Also, if you want to see more about uh, Heimer, you're in our application center here in Villa Park, Illinois right now. You can actually go to heimer-usa.com and you can actually click on our application center 360. That will actually take you to our 25,000 square foot application center in Egenhausen, Germany. And you can actually take a virtual tour of our entire tech center. There's over 40 videos and demonstrations of all of our shrinking, balancing, presetting, and cutting tool product in that tech center. Thank you very much, guys.